How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. We have a lot of interesting things happening here today. And, you know, I say brace for impact. The fact is, a lot of people were not ready for this recent dip, and they're also not going to be ready for this new run up that we're going to have. You know, I think we're going to have explosive days. And I want to give you some of the background why that's going to happen here today and talk about how max pain price is probably up from here, right? A lot of people will be caught on the wrong side of the trade and will FOMO in at the top. And I have some numbers and I have some data to show you that that's going to happen. And last but not least, we do have Gary Gensler talking about crypto for about six minutes. He talks about the problems within crypto. I want to give some uh, color to that conversation. I want to explain my thoughts on what he just said on live TV. And if you don't mind, hit subscribe. Turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this. There's going to be a link to Marjex underneath the video in case you want to trade cryptocurrency. You can use Marjex. You can sign up with the link and you get a deposit uh, bonus. So when you deposit a certain amount, you get... A deposit bonus that can be used towards fees and there's no kyc you can trade a bunch of different assets using different collateral which is really cool so you can trade all these different cryptocurrencies and you can trade with different forms of collateral so if you want to trade caspa you can trade it with caspa or you can trade it with tether you can trade it with bitcoin which is cool now let's take a look at where bitcoin's price is so we got rejected by the 50-day moving average twice so you can see we fell below it we had been kind of using it as support for a while. <clears throat> and then we fell below it, got rejected here, got rejected here. But we are above this right here. Let me actually go to the one hour. Then we'll get rid of this. You can see that we are flipping this line into support. So that's quite bullish. We got rejected four or five times. I talked about this in the last video, but we did flip it as support, it looks like. And we're moving up here. Now, we got some good inflow numbers from yesterday. So this was Friday's numbers where we saw 63 million coming from Grayscale, 103 from Fidelity, etc. I'll just scoot right on down to yesterday. We had another good day from Grayscale. We actually saw a positive number, 4 million, and then nearly 100 million for Fidelity, 22 million from iBit. ARK had, I think it's the best day that they've had, 76 million. And it was a green day for every ETF out there, or at least sideways. So another great day from the ETFs. We'll also get to what Gary said here in a minute. But this is a big rumor going around right now. Chinese ETF rumor mill. Richard By Byworth, managing partner at Size Capital, has ignited rumors suggesting the Bitcoin ETFs list in Hong Kong could soon be accessible to investors from mainland China. Uh, they remark on X highlighting... The ongoing discussions about the possibility of the integration of these ETFs into the Stock Connect system. The integration could pave the way for a massive wave of capital inflow from mainland into digital asset funds. Uh, Byworth stated, I just got back from Hong Kong. There's talk that the ETF could be added to Stock Connect. The implications for this are absolutely enormous. Basically means mainland money can buy it. The statement followed a dialogue initiated by Samson Mao who commented on the impressive initial performance of China AMC, which generated 180, uh, 121 million on its first day trading. And there was a difference of uh, reporting that first day. Some people said that it was quite poor, showing that there was only a couple million in volume. But then later we heard reports of 100 million plus the first day. So it seems like this actually did quite well. The Hong Kong ETFs did well, and they're still they're still pulling in inflows. Now, I think eventually China will be able to buy the ETFs. I'm no uh, I'm no politician or anything like that. I'm not um, specifically educated to talk about what the Chinese Party will and will not allow. But I would not be surprised if eventually they can buy the Bitcoin ETFs. And we're hearing rumors of other countries as well approving. South Korea's new government will vote to allow spot Bitcoin ETFs in June. You have to remember, the spot ETFs are different than just allowing them to buy Bitcoin. Uh, there's a totally different game that's being played. I mean, think about it just from the US perspective. Who is actually buying the Bitcoin? 
the large companies. The large companies can be controlled. They can have or they can freeze your accounts, that kind of thing, right? I mean, maybe not in the U.S., but definitely, I guess, in China, right? If if someone wants to buy Bitcoin and they go buy it through a company, the company gets paid. They can also control that money easier than Bitcoin, obviously. If you have Bitcoin in our cold storage wallet, you can leave and the government really can't do too much if you never come back. And if, you know, uh, they're... Some people might say... Some people might say how some people might say this is crazy that China would allow these ETFs. But you have to remember, there is a huge difference between owning Bitcoin and owning Bitcoin ETFs. China wants to control people, but they also want people to have money and to be happy. Right. Uh, For the most part. Right. They don't want people to be fed up, pissed off at the government. And, you know, if they can make people money especially from other countries, right? I mean, make money in their own country, but make it from people buying before other countries. If they go buy Bitcoin and it doubles, that's just good for China, especially if the people don't actually control the Bitcoin, right? It's still sitting in accounts that they can turn on and off. Think about that. All the power is still with the companies that China can control, but uh, people don't necessarily realize that or maybe they just uh, have no alternative but there's a huge difference between that and holding physical or holding actual bitcoin so i think that this could be approved i don't know when but it could be approved sooner than most people think again there is just a huge difference from a risk perspective to a government when you hold bitcoin versus a bitcoin etf now moving on dylan leclerc is joining meta planet now just to remind you, MetaPlanet was a company that bought about $6.25 million worth of Bitcoin using this as like a corporate treasury. Um, the company, which is listed on the Tokyo Stock Exchange, declared its intention to adopt a Bitcoin as a treasure, as a treasury reserve asset. Uh, earlier this year on X, MetaPlanet st- stated its plan is to buy 1 billion, I think this is yen, in Bitcoin as an initial commitment. Uh, the move closely mimics the strategy employed by MicroStrategy. So Dylan LeClaire is now joining them. MetaPlanet is embracing a corporate Bitcoin standard and will strategically leverage public capital markets to acquire additional Bitcoin for shareholders over time. So they are hiring him as a director of Bitcoin strategy. It's pretty cool, uh, honestly. I'm glad that they're hiring a Bitcoiner someone that's been in the space for a while. Uh, Dylan's obviously quite successful, uh, which is really cool to see a company that's going to continue to buy Bitcoin with such a young guy that's going to kind of steer the ship in the right direction. Okay, now we just got Gary Gensler speaking. I couldn't find the video for a while. It wasn't uploaded, but now it is here. Let's play this. One of the things I wanted to ask you is when you look at the headlines today around what the SEC is doing and what your priorities are, it's hard to tell how much of your focus today is on the stock market writ large versus the world of crypto and trying to figure out the future of Ethereum and other things. How do you see it? Well, I I see it this way. We oversee a $110 trillion capital market. About half of that's the stock market, half, as you might know, is the, the bond markets and other markets. Crypto is a small piece of our overall markets, and uh, but it's an outsized piece of the scams and frauds and problems in our markets because without prejudging any one token, much of this field is non-compliant with the protections of our securities laws. And so thus, you end up with like an outsized ratio of journalist questions and crypto journalists to market cap. But is that a function also of the fact that that's where your attention is too? No, it's a, it's a function of where your attention is. Think about it. I've been on your show, what, a dozen times? And every show you ask about crypto, and my guessing is this will be a majority crypto interview, while the capital markets are $110 trillion. So it's also about where the financial media is focused. Well, I, I want to ask you actually about a whole bunch of things in, in, uh-huh. in the classic stock market. 
Uh, but, I'm looking forward to it. But, uh, but let me ask you this. Um, uh, Vlad Tanev, a uh, Robin Hood, you, you, you delivered a Wells notice to them. I know that you're not going to want to speak directly to them, but I do want to read you because what's interesting is literally just yesterday he put out a statement uh, effectively attacking you and the SEC. Uh, Brian Armstrong from Coinbase said effectively, welcome to the club. I mean, all this well, goes just, on just so they, to Twitter. So that the listeners of the American public can understand. We have a really important responsibility as being a cop on the beat and ensuring that people that are asking you to put your money and to buy or sell securities are following the law so you get disclosures, that you get certain protections. And we have live uh, uh, in-court litigation with at least one of those companies, Coinbase, right. uh, in front of judges at this point in time. What is the state of play, though, with Robinhood to the extent that you can discuss it? And for those investors out there who are watching this morning who might have money at Robinhood, what are they supposed to think about these news Look, reports? Look, I, I can't speak to any one uh, company, but stepping back from it, the field of crypto assets, without prejudging any one of them, Many of those tokens are securities under the law of the land as interpreted by the U.S. Supreme Court. So we follow that law. And you, the investors, are not getting the required or needed disclosures about those right. assets. And, and so, like, this is earnings seasons right, right now, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Everybody's asking about what's the earnings release and how many companies are beating earnings or falling behind and so forth. Where is the disclosures from these crypto tokens similar to these seasoned earnings releases? Well, let me ask you this. Ultimately, and I think this is the big question in crypto land right now, is Ethereum a commodity or is Ethereum a security? And therefore, will there one day be an ETF? That's the fundamental question on the table in crypto land. Do you agree? Oh, you're the one that's out there asking the questions. All I would say is, to me, the fundamental question is, is how do we ensure that the American investor is protected? And right now they're not getting the required or needed disclosures. And the intermediaries in the center of this rather centralized market generally are conflicted and doing things we would never allow the New York Stock Exchange to do. The New York Stock Exchange is not allowed to right. trade against the investors. Okay, but let me ask you about this. You've seen the consensus lawsuit, and I know you have a Wells notice uh, uh, with them as well. This is uh, uh, Patrick Henry saying the following, and I want you to respond to it. Just months after a federal judge sanctioned SEC enforcement lawyers for lying in court, new evidence shows that Chair Gary Gensler himself misled Congress. The testimony of the Financial Services Committee last uh, April, Chair Gensler refused to answer questions about the SEC's classification of ether, and new court filings show this was an intentional attempt to misrepresent the commission's position. The, we speak to Congress directly in hearings like that and also directly to members, and we share with them uh, uh, accurately what we're doing. So that the viewers can also understand we don't speak about uh, whether we have an investigation or whether we don't have an investigation, and we don't speak about whether somebody is, in our opinion, not following the law unless we actually right. bring a case. So we stay uh, quiet on many right. questions that you might ask at this right. live interview or even but ultimately in should investors, a congressional it, hearing. There's a lot of folks who bought Ethereum expecting that one day there will be um, potentially uh, an ETF and that it will be considered a genuine uh, security that's tradable on these exchanges. Will that happen? Uh, again, that, that's something in front of our commission right now. We're a five-member commission and those filings will take up uh, at the appropriate time. Is that something from a timing perspective, though? Um, this is an election year. Um, the, the, this administration may be the administration uh, come next year. It may not be the administration. How does that impact the work you're doing? I'm just focused on how we can uh, do the most for 330 million Americans, what we can do to drive efficiency resiliency, competition in the equity markets, the treasury markets, the fixed income markets, and yes, also addressing some of the uh, activity in the crypto markets where actors are not uh, uh, uniformly following the law. They, they, they just, there's a lot of, a lot of people have lost their hard-earned funds in, in the field that you seem to be so. This sounds great.
Right. It sounds great to the uneducated person uh, on crypto. Oh, they're just trying to protect us. There have been a lot of issues. To be clear, there have been a lot of exchanges, a lot of shady characters. Who have they actually helped, though? They've gone after some of the top companies in the space. Coinbase, Ripple, Kraken, Uniswap, Grayscale, Consensus, Robinhood, all Wells notices or lawsuits. Why not go after uh, the people that are actually causing issues? Like these are the most reputable exchanges, uh, some of the most reputable companies in the crypto space. Maybe they're thinking, okay, if we can clean up the best of the best, then we can point people to them. But they're not being very clear. They're not being forthright. They're not actually explaining what these companies have to do. And they're not being fair. They've been called out for literally uh, abusing their power. So why not go after the companies that are actually causing issues out there, not the ones that you've already given approval to list on uh, different exchanges like stock exchanges, Coinbase and Robinhood are some of the most, I'd say probably the most audited, uh, most watched companies in the crypto space and some of the best actors. So again, it's, it sounds good on, on the surface level uh, for a lot of people in crypto, they just hate Gary automatically because they've heard other people hate Gary. And I honestly, I wouldn't dislike what he's doing if he was just being honest and open and actually gave some clarification on Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies instead of just hiding behind uh, the SEC and hiding uh, what they're actually trying to do, not actually explaining what they think about different assets, not giving any communication with these large crypto companies. Because I think a lot of them would play ball if the SEC was willing to help them go back and forth with them on explaining what they want to see. Now, I apologize a little bit for the audio there. Uh, I have not seen any other video of this yet. And it was coming from this video, that uh, like little interference. Overall, Bitcoin continues to become more adopted throughout the world. And whether the price is going up or going down... There are always people coming in because when the price goes up, they don't want to be left out. When the price goes down, they think, finally, I have a chance to buy at a reasonable price. Now, some people are extremely bullish on Bitcoin. You know, I talked about people getting in at the top. Plan B says average Bitcoin price 2020 through 2024 was 34K, a bit below the stock to flow prediction of 55K, but still in a normal range and not bad given that Bitcoin was below $4,000 when the price prediction was made refit stock to flow with new data uh, and this shows similar parameters and results half a million dollars point point five million from 2024 to 2028 so 500k bitcoin and 4 million 2028 to 2020 uh to 2032 that is insane isn't it i mean a lot of people don't think that far into the future but yeah he's talking about a four million dollar bitcoin and four years, five years, something like that. I mean, we always think about the the current cycle, but he's saying we could have an 8x after this next 8x. (laughs) Man, that would be be okay with me. Now, some people are getting ready for this future. Mr. 100 continues to buy, buying twice today, 200 Bitcoin, 100 Bitcoin. So up to 300 Bitcoin for the day, swallowing up some more. And, uh, you know, some people, you know, some people love Bitcoin. They're talking about how high it can go. Uh, they're trying to accumulate as much as possible. But this person, Chris Pan, who apparently took some psychedelics to write his commencement speech for Ohio State, um, I assume Ohio State, OSU, and then tell, uh, he told 60,000 people to buy Bitcoin to protect their purchasing power. He got booze. <laughs> this is hilarious. Um I, I love Bitcoin, but I would be surprised to hear about it at a commencement ceremony, at a graduation. <laughs> kind of kind of funny there, but yeah, I mean, it's spreading. People still don't love it. I mean, even if we were in the top of the bull cycle, I think we'd get some, I think we'd still get a lot of booze and a lot of uh, people shouting in a good way too. A lot of people praising Bitcoin or uh, giving woos, you know, booze and woos. But I don't necessarily know if this is the best part, uh, best place to talk about this. Obviously, Bitcoin is really important. And if you have a wise stage, sure, I think it makes sense to talk about it. But, you know, you wonder if this is 
a bit of a marketing marketing ploy or something uh, for Chris Pan himself. I'm not sure. It just seems like a weird place to talk about this. Uh, and I, you know, I realize a lot of people are there just to celebrate their kids. So yeah, maybe they don't want to hear about Bitcoin. Now let's move on to some smaller cryptos and then um, we'll come back to Bitcoin. DYOR, the moment you've been waiting for, DYOR Exchange's investment app is finally available. Head over to the Google Play Store to download. Now DYOR is a project I'm investing in. A couple of these next cryptos are projects that I'm investing in, but that's because I think they're going to do quite well. Uh, you can see they have a ton of coals over at DYOR. Kyle Chassis, or Chase, Mondo, Eric, Crypto Man, Cryptos Are Us, that Martini guy. Uh, they have a lot of people that are spreading what they're doing. Now, like I said, they're now available on the Google Play Store. Honestly, I don't know if they're on App Store. I have to check that. But uh, you can see some of their information here. The social crypto exchange now available on Google Play Store presents a decentralized crypto investing platform with simple, transparent, and non-custodial alternatives for investors turning uh, to DeFi from the chaos of traditional crypto exchanges. Obviously, yeah, there has been just a massive problem with crypto exchanges in the last bull run, but you know, they're hoping to improve that. An iOS version is due to be released soon. Okay, DYOR has over 600,000 users on its waitlist, a number that grew in the recent months. The app uses a Tinder-like approach to investing, allowing users to swipe right on the crypto tokens they wish to invest in. So pretty cool. Uh, pay attention to this. Like I said, the token will be dropping soon as well. Now, NeuroChain is also a crypto that I'm really interested in. Over 1,000 blockchains and counting, NeuroChain is your gateway to fully interoperable AI network. Hook up your GPU to any chain, earn rewards on your preferred blockchain. So this is kind of like an infrastructure AI play. This is one that I'm really excited about, so be on the lookout for that. I'll talk more about it in the future as well. AEG is doing a massive giveaway. We're giving away 10K worth of tokens for your posts and engagements in partnership with Ray, uh, tag AEG and or mention Aether in your posts and comments, engage, so on. You can go follow them. Aether Games is one that I've invested into as well. And they are already live. Like the tokens are already live. They're a gaming studio. So kind of like an infrastructure gaming play. EC also already live, but they're coming to a new centralized exchange in just two days. Uh, what centralized exchange will it be? We'll find out on Wednesday. Now this is already a pretty large following that they have there. Gamified liquidity solution for digital assets, tokens, and RWAs on Blast. And it is backed by Animoca, uh, Animoca brand. So uh, I've talked about this a lot in the past, maybe one that you want to tune into. Uh, a lot of these coins too, when they come to the market, they kind of settle for a while, uh, find some price bottoms and then continue moving up during the bull market. SolarX is also an interesting one. It's a layer one blockchain and solar powered crypto mining project. The listing day is coming up soon as well. Um, this is one that I'm also <laughs> investing in, right? I'm investing in a lot of smaller projects and newer projects because during the bull run, these typically do quite well and it is hard to lose on these. Now that's not financial advice, but that's kind of the case at, at some point it's just really hard to lose on newer projects now Moonbase, i talked about it two days ago it went up yesterday about 50 percent. now it's down about 50 percent. this thing is a uh, volatile beast actually it's down about 30 percent, not 50 percent. but yeah this is one that i'm still holding on to if you haven't already checked it out uh, yeah, you can go check out my full video talk about the meme coin that i'm buying recently of course like i said in that video this is very volatile it can go up significantly and it can also go down significantly but i do know that they are working on some more marketing and this is a crypto token that gives you reflection so as long as they continue to keep momentum i think it'll do pretty well of course though that's not financial advice you have to do your own research and i'm never going to tell you to buy a cryptocurrency that may be Bitcoin, but that's not financial advice either. Uh, just a reminder, crypto is literally only 15 years old. It started with zero value and zero adoption. Imagine how it looks in another 15 years. It's crazy to think about. People don't like to think past this current cycle. People don't like to think about uh, past this current week You know, uh, in crypto or just outside of crypto. But I think it is important to remember 
we have come a long way. If you go from a dollar to $63,000, that is a massive, massive change in, in price, in adoption, and that's where we've come in the last 15 years. This has been the hardest 15 years as well. This has been the riskiest 15 years. As time goes on, it sounds crazy, but crypto and Bitcoin actually become less risky. You might not think that. You think, well, the price is higher. That's true. But from a fundamental perspective, not price, but just fundamentals, will Bitcoin be here to stay? Every single day, it becomes less risky because there's more and more adoption, more and more people buy it. It's harder and harder to ban. More and more people get approved for ETFs and such. And it just becomes more ingrained in our society. Gary Gensler can't get rid of Bitcoin right now. I mean, think about this. Over the last 15 years, Bitcoin's prices appreciated at about 109% a year. If you just average it out from a dollar up to 63,415. Okay, let's take half of that. Let's say it's 1.54 for the next 15 years times the current price of 63,000. That is an unimaginable number, $40 million. Now, who's to say it continues to go up like that? It's really going to come down to whether you think Bitcoin's got exponential returns or if it's just got diminishing returns. But let's say it goes up by a factor of 1.25 or 25%. That's still a $1.8 million Bitcoin in 15 years. And I think a lot of people would say that's not crazy to think about. I mean, we're talking about four cycles from now or three, three cycles from now. That's still a crazy number and would vastly outperform the market. So just think long term here. I always want to hold on to some Bitcoin. I don't care what the price is. I always want to hold on to some. But I know that there are going to be people that take profits all the way up. So as the price continues to go up, it goes into stronger and stronger hands that really don't care to sell. They've already got businesses that have funded this Bitcoin uh, strategy that they have. And eventually it's going to be quite easy to take loans on your Bitcoin as well. I was talking to someone just last week about this. And there are going to be a lot of people that don't want to actually sell the underlying asset. They're just going to, they're just going to take loans against it. And right now, a lot of people can't even really do that or they don't want to do that because of some of the risks that happened last cycle. But think about it. After, after these ETFs get approved, right, uh, you can take portfolio loans. And of course, you could get liquidated. You could lose. Uh, but eventually those companies won't really want to sell the underlying Bitcoin, right? Maybe they buy it back. I, I'm not sure really, but there are going to be banks that are willing to give you loans. And instead of, instead of selling the Bitcoin, they're just going to hold on to it if you get liquidated. Or, you know, there's just going to be a lot of people that are very careful and provide more collateral if need be. So it is an interesting time that we're going into. Continue to take a long-term approach. If you do want to trade though, if you do want to trade, you can check out the link to Margex underneath the video. I think a lot of people are just becoming bored because we did this kind of sideways down action. But as soon as we move back up, they are going to be tuning in like mad. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. You can check out all those cryptocurrencies as well if you want. And I will see you.